Hello my soccer universe. Well, I have at least one jersey of the new reigning world champions. Of course, they are not. It's not the one that has been worn a lot, but hey. So be it. I think it's time to put a ball on my World Cup coverage in one big video. No, I'm not going to do a review of the jersey matchups. I think you got two videos on that what I thought. I think I don't need to go any further in there. What I want to do in this video is discuss a, the legacy of this World Cup. I want to dish out ratings purely from a statistical point of view for each of the performances for all 32 teams. So we're going to go 32 to 1 who had the statistically the best to the worst performance. So we do it the other way around, of course. Um, and then I actually want to look forward into the future of uh, the World Cup because that's also a discussion that I think came a little bit short. And yeah, uh, national teams will come back sooner than we would expect with you know European qualifying <laughs> coming soon our way as well. And that's something I have not even attempted to uh, do anything about it. But maybe during the Christmas break, if I have some free minutes, although. I can already tell you, during Christmas break, I will probably spend a whole lot more time with my family. And, you know, I have already uh, three video projects, which are all top 10 end of year videos, which will take up my free time with maybe the occasional unpacking here or there. You know, Christmas is coming around. So that just as a thumb, uh, as a uh, disclaimer, what is going to happen next. Okay. This World Cup, I mean, I have, we, I think we all can agree, meanwhile, and I even said so, that it ended with the ultimate climax, the best World Cup final ever. However, I'm very, very hesitant to say that this was the best World Cup ever, and there are a few uh, reasons for that. A, it's all really, really fresh, but uh, in a way, this World Cup didn't really start out all that great. We had a whole lot of upsets in the first round of matches. The second round of matches was rather dull drudgery. Only when Serbia and Cameroon played a 3-3, this was like this woo uh, result. But in, be in between, it was really, really, really uh, rough watching at times. Then the group stage ended. And because it was rather tight and dense before, and we had maybe a few upsets, uh, and we'll talk about why these upsets may have been, uh, it had the ultimate climax, uh, the group stage, and I really thought this cannot be topped. Um, but it was followed by a relatively so-and-so round of 16. Yeah, there were some interesting matches, but uh, it went more or less like expected, uh, with maybe the one exception being uh, Morocco uh, ousting Spain. That was definitely not except, uh, expected. The quarterfinals then, because the round 16 went so expected, we got a really good quarterfinal round. And I would say this is something, um, all four matches had something were tight, tense, had something riding on it. So this is something that also will stick out. Semifinals again went the other route. It went rather um, straightforward in a way. And then we had, of course, the final, which was the ultimate climax, which was maybe right. Now. The one thing that for this World Cup, why we had all these upsets and why the group stage was dense, I, th I really think has to there was only one week of preparation. And usually, remember, when there's World Cup pre preparation, even the big nations, they do a test match here and there where they're not performing all that well. But right on point, when the World Cup starts, they usually are there. Now they didn't have that. And for many teams, this did not work out well and they needed to find themselves. I mean, the, world champion, the eventual World uh, Cup winners I don't want to call them World, it's World Cup winners. Uh, Argentina started with a loss to Saudi Arabia, which is still something to be remembered, uh, that they did not start this tournament very, very well. So um, I think this short preparation phase, and it was really too short. I think a two-week break ahead of the World Cup would have done wonders. And uh, that the World Cup break then was completely hijacked by uh, Cristiano Ronaldo's interview did not help the whole thing either. Uh, it also meant that once these upsets were, then all the matches got a little bit more tense in the second round uh, because no one really wanted to go home and we had not many teams eliminated after two matches. I think it was Canada 
uh, and Qatar, uh, the hosts that were eliminated, everyone else stayed more or less in the tournament because it was rather tense and there was a lot of riding on, on, on it. And it was then starting the round of 16 and I would say up to the quarterfinals. I think the quarterfinals were also good because for many teams they had almost a week break after the group stage, which was rather, rather tight. There was an almost a week break uh, for many teams where you actually could recover a little bit. And you know, the teams that had a short shorter break, they had also a little bit longer run up towards the World Cup. So scheduling definitely an issue. And while many now say the Winter World Cup, yeah, it was such, such a great World Cup, we should have more uh, World Cups in the winter. Um, I think it really has to do that it was great because we had this short run up and I don't think it was a good thing. I really don't, don't think. And yes, it is good to end it on a high, but more on that as well. Uh, let's uh, talk, 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 talk about it. I think, I think another quality is to, um, when I saw we had these ups and downs, whereas I think when I just look at the last two World Cups, uh, Russia was very entertaining from almost the get go. Uh, what did not uh, bode well for Russia 2018 is that the bracket was rather uneven so we had always great games on one side and then kind of the lower games on the other that was one one thing that was definitely not so great about russia 2018 but we barely had any nil nils and at the beginning of this world cup there were nil nils there was one nils there were late goals and 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 so on and yeah stoppage time but i don't mind having more stoppage time if the, if, if they get to somewhere Another way to, and you know, 2018, uh, 2004, for, for, for 14, I think we had one of the best group stages because it started out with a bang. I mean, loads of goals being scored and then it kind of slowed down. Now, um, another way to judge a World Cup is, of course, judging it by the World Cup winner. And, you know, uh, did uh, because usually a great World Cup, you want to have a proper winner. Um, and while Argentina was definitely among the pre-tournament favorites if you've watched regularly my video videos there were times when i said i cannot imagine this argentina team winning they were too fragile they were one of the weirder champions as of late yes star power there but with uh, Lionel messi and angel di maria but if i look at the rest of the squad it is not like this super outstanding squad however Credit where credit credit is due, they got it together and when they need it, they got it done. But uh, what I what I really thought will eventually undo Argentina is this absolute frailty that as soon as they concede, everything went out of the window. Window. Lionel Scaloni, the manager, always, I mean, he had, did not have a fixed star of Sagliana, but he was tinkering and I think one event on the final, the way he put Angel Di Maria on the uh, other side of the pitch and completely messed with France this way. This was a genius, but he was not very good in reacting, and he always reacted of going more defensive. And I always had the feeling there's not much depth to that squad, but uh, maybe with all the emotions they can be carried a teeny bit forward. It was a surprise to me how easy they went over Croatia. But when I look at the entirety of their tournament, uh, they were not the most convincing World Cup champions. The previous two uh remember germany they had an up and down group stage and once they beat in the quarterfinal uh france at that moment i knew it will be really really hard to uh to that uh, germany are not going to be world cup winners because that was such a clear performance and yeah in the end it turned out france basically won the 2018 world cup in second gear they only had to let loose once against argentina and then they let loose at the end in the final. But overall, you always had the feeling that they're in second gear. Uh, but there was an inevitability around them. Same thing, uh, I had a similar feeling kind of with Spain that how they got into the um, in 2010 when they got into quarterfinals. Um, also, it was kind of uh, 2006. You know, there was always a World Cup, Cup, Cup winner. You always had that feeling. This is a really, really good, good, good team. Yeah, there might be the occasion flaw, but they look overall very, very settled. This is what this Argentina squad did not have, in my opinion. They were a little bit lucky. I also think that very often some decisions went their way and the lenient attitude of the referees definitely played also in their favor. Um, I don't want to totally discount, I, by no means do I want to discount what the defeated Argentina has achieved. 
But I have to say, among all the world champions that we had lately, I think this seems to be one that might go away sooner than we think. I actually think if Messi is not with this team, I really hope for them that the other uh, people can pick up the pieces. But I think this will be a world champion that will go out relatively soon in 26. Uh, I cannot shake that feeling. Again, crowning achievement for uh, for uh, the, the, the career of one of the greatest players that we have ever seen. And it was a fairy tale story in that sense. But if I look at it um, overall, I think there were teams in there that looked much more complete. Not least of them, France. And uh, when I think about it, France went there with a B squad, did almost the impossible. And I don't know what happened in the first half and for most of the time in the second half. That is something that it leaves me puzzled like Brazil in 98, in a way. So just have those things in mind. And I think even France were lucky because, you know, they lost against a really, really good England team. This Brazil team was really, really, really loaded. And I think it's also that the upsets that actually came, they went right into the cards of our, our Argentina. And my literally my first thought was when Brazil got eliminated, my first thought, this is how Argentina is going to win the World Cup. Because they, Croatia for me is now at the big boys. But then since they have not won it, they are not at the up up by Echon. They are, they, are, they are tier 1B, if you like. Argentina only had to play one really, really big nation in France and were probably lucky that this France squad was already ravaged by injuries and had probably this bug going into. And uh, Scaloni actually, and uh, we need to give credit there, he found the right tactic to beat them. So, you know, it's a very, very up and down uh, re re resume for me for this World Cup. I wouldn't go as far to judge it as the best World Cup ever. I don't think this is there. Now, uh, for Qatar as a host, uh, if we had all the weird, uh, the, the repressive stuff uh, that was mentioned, we had actually deaths occurring at this World Cup, not only the um, Grand Wall, but also some migrant workers, which totally uh, got mentioned because the football had taken over at that point. Um, that there was no alcohol served, okay, I think is probably just about excusable. Uh, that the Croatian uh, female fan, the, the model, uh, showed up with less and less clothes was also, um, you know, she really took it out and they tried to hold back. But I think if this wasn't the World Cup there in the world's eye was on it, this could have been a major disaster right there. Um, and, you know, at the beginning of the World World Cup and certain TV crews were pulled, pulled away, I, it was not all that happy there. What was though in favor of Qatar was that it was a World Cup where everything was danced together. Now, do we need in a small country eight huge stadiums? No. I hope that most of the stadiums uh, will be downsized as was um, uh, promised because that seems like overkill and I think you don't need... I think uh, a country like Qatar in their size, if they have two big stadiums, that's about as much as you need. Uh, so in that sense, it did not make much sense. However, I think if you were a fan visiting there and if you were a journalist covering the World Cup, uh, you could go to two games in a day. What definitely was positive for me were the huge fan masses uh, for certain teams, uh, which I didn't expect. And it was kind of had the World Cup had a very different feel. Um, in the sense that it was not the European fans that descended en masse on this World Cup. No, these were uh, the Arabian diaspora and it was the South, the big South American uh, fan blocks that were coming, which gave the tournament a very, very special and very unique feel. Just saying. So, I mean, those are a few observations. Uh, I think there would be more, but I don't want this video to become another one hour monstrosity because now I want to go into rating every single team. Before we go into the ratings, just the idea is I took before the tournament, I made the simulations and, you know, based on some simulations, I can see what's the probability that you finish last in your group, third in your group, that you make it to the round of 16, quarterfinal, semifinal, final and win it. And based on that, I see, okay, these were the pro, the, the, the pro probabilities. And now where you end and end, ended up, what was the, pro, the chances of you? exceeding this result or falling short of this result and then taking the differences you can then quickly see okay uh, 
which one weighed heavier. If you uh, have barely a chance of exceeding it, then of course you did really, really well. Whereas if you had a, a barely a chance of getting worse uh, than Volato did, then, then you performed badly. So basically on these two numbers, this is all made. And then I put it on a scale from zero to a hundred percent and then attached a letter grade to it as well. And we put the graph up and we roll th slowly through it. We'll start with the worst team, which is actually Denmark. Which is not that much of a surprise because you know uh, this was a group that Denmark was supposedly to survive easily with having Tunisia and Australia in there. Uh, they both uh, ahead of, uh, finished ahead of them and Denmark had a pretty rough World Cup and while I had them in my pre-tournament uh, fun prediction going all the way to the semi-final I didn't believe in myself uh, honestly. Uh, I could have very well seen this is a World Cup tank. So uh, there you go. Sim very similar story also for Serbia, um, who were not expected to finish last. Let's group. They were actually, I mean, yes, they were in it up until the end. If they would have gotten a result against Switzerland, they may have moved on. But overall, very disappointing finishing last. Then we have already have Belgium. Now, uh, Belgium was such a heavy favorite that them not making it out of the group was already seen as a major, major disaster. Mitigating circumstances, both of their group uh, mates, if you like, made it to the semifinals. Maybe their exit looks a little bit better than you would uh, say, but given their high tour tournament rating, this is a rather disappointing World Cup for Belgium. As for the host of Qatar, worst host in history. We had many bests. Qatar were the vo worst host nation ever at the World Cup. Three and out, with one goal scored. Not good. Wales, despite having maybe a one good half showing against the US uh, to come back. Other than that, rather disappointing from a team that seemed to be a little bit over its zenith. So there you go. Germany is in a 2027. Absolutely. The Ger Germany was maybe in the second tier of favorites. They've got eliminated for a second time in a row with a group stage. It looks very much like Italy after winning the World Cup. Italy twice exited in the group station and twice didn't qual qualify. Uh, Ger Germany could, I could see a pattern like that for Germ Germany as well. And similarly, Uruguay, who were one of the pre-tournament dark horses and should have easily made it out of this group. No, not, nothing at all. They got picked by South Korea uh, and, you know, they fell a goal, a goal shy. Uruguay, though, I give a D- because they are just above the 20% mark. Similar goes for Canada, but here I find the rating a little bit harsh because Canada was in uh, retroactively seen a really, really tough group. And they, are, and they were one of the more entertaining sides and they got their first world ever World Cup Cup goal. They probably should have beaten Belgium though. So uh, there you go. Costa Rica as expected in third place, but with a win. So that's a good one. Uh, similar for Ghana and of course Saudi Arabia. Uh, who all got wins, finishing less but getting wins. So uh, this is a really, really good performance for them. In at 21st is Spain. This is the first uh, team that survived the group stage that shows up there. But of course, Spain expected much more. Um, while the group stage was going, uh, going on and even finishing, I thought that Spain is among a select group of teams that will finish, uh, that could win the World Cup. I said one of between Brazil, Spain and France is gonna win it. Ah, shows you how bold I know. I, I know. I really didn't see Art or Argentina win it, but Spain. Not only that they didn't win the group, but then also getting also by Morocco way too early and passing themselves to death was not a good showing. Mexico, their streak of making it out of the group fell. They had no fifth game, only three games, and again a goal short. Uh, rather dis disappointing, and once really has to question. How was it that they, the way they played Argentina and Argentina team that was majorly under shock and nervous and then Tata Martino goes all defensive and basically allows Argentina back into the tournament. Ecuador gets already a C, it's only one of two nations that get a C, so we're done with the Ds. Um, Ecuador, more or less what was expected from them, a third place, however, it could have been so much more. So it's kind of, you know, okay. 
you performed well, you got the win in the opening game, uh, you actually got a draw against the net, and, 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 but when it counted, you actually didn't, didn't show up, although you were quite favored and a draw would, would have been enough. Iran, um, almost the same, it's just that Iran was probably in a tougher group. So therefore, I would uh, uh, put it higher. They got the win against Wales. Yes, you got trounced by uh, England, but everything did not go your way. It was a rather disappointing showing against the US, where it was more chaos and nervousness on the US side that did not see you go through. And then, with 17 teams left, everyone gets at least a B minus. And in number 17, I actually have England. Um, just a fraction of, uh, behind uh, 16th. England, more or less what was it? A quarter final exit, given the uh, size and so on for, uh, of, of England, is, is usually par for, for them. The one thing is, of course, that if you would have beaten France and it was there, England could have done something special in this, tour, in, in this tournament. Uh, there is a bright future for this England squad. But, you know, just being par with the um, uh, rating that England has, uh, you cannot get more than 17th, but you get a B-. minus. The Netherlands, very much the same, although their performances honestly were not as good as the one for England, but they took at least Argentina to uh, overtime. But I, no one knows yet how that happened. Brazil was dazzling us for um, large swaths of the tournament and again a quarterfinal exit. Uh, what becomes the round of 16 for Mexico is slowly becoming uh, Brazil's quarterfinal exit. Similar to England, um, Brazil is probably of the three biggest nations in World Cup history, the one that still performs best, the other ones being Germany and Italy. But Brazil's reputation is taking a real dent as of late. Portugal, more or less the same grade as uh, Brazil, uh, just a slightly better because Brazil was much more of a bigger favorite. But again, if you look overall at the tournament, it could have been more. In 13, a team that got limited with Tunisia, but Tunisia actually got a win against France to boot. So uh, that definitely sets the tournament off, had huge self support, a little bit more finishing. And I think Tunisia easily could have gone through in this group. There is no doubt in my mind about that. Switzerland did really well in the group stage. However, we attacked by Murat Mur Yakin, saw them exit the tournament, then rather, rather disappointingly with a 6-1 trouncing by Portugal. The United States is the old, I mean, we can always say, I, I say this so, so, so often, uh, United States are expected to make it out of a group, but making a quarterfinal is a major step up that they still have to master, and it seemed to, again, they were, in terms of play, very level with the Net Netherlands. However, the Netherlands were way more effective in front of goal, and that's what undid them. Cameron is ahead of the United States for one very simple reason. They got the first win against Brazil. They were expected to finish dead last in this group. No, they finished third, and they got the win, and this is a huge uh, step up, given how lowly they were rated before the tournament. However, Senegal definitely was uh, the shining moment of South Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, relatively unlucky against the Netherlands then. Um, yeah, not a great showing against Qatar, but you got the win. And then you, when it really counted, you showed up. You gave England for half an hour a really, really tough time. But then England was just a much better team. And so Senegal had exited the tournament with a rather positive. And one thing that I said before the tournament is that it will not be a good worker for Africa. Boy, was I wrong on that one. Poland, unbelievably eighth. They achieved way more than they probably would have deserved. I gotta be that honest. Poland, watching Poland was a real challenge because they didn't give us much. They gave us a missed penalty. And the only time that they kind of showed up was actually against France. And then France uh, uh, did them relatively easily. In number seven, we have South Korea. Totally un unexpected to make it out of the group, especially the way they came. Once they lost against Ghana, no one expected South Korea to do anything. It was just that Portugal were already qualified for the next round. That actually helped them. And that Ghana then in the end decided, okay, let's take Uruguay down with us. And that's how South Korea then got a late winner, saw them through, where they then got some merit, um shipped off by Brazil. 
Japan is the last Asian na a, a true Asian nation in this countdown. There's one more left. You can probably guess which one. Um, Japan actually surprised everyone by winning this group and in the weirdest way possible. You beat the two former world champions, Germany and Spain, but you lose to Costa Rica and then you are ousted on penalties when you more or less had Croatia in a good position. But Croatia is a team that you gotta beat, beat not only once, you gotta beat them twice, three times, four times. That's what they could not do. The finishing let them down there. In at number five, I was a little bit surprised about that as well. And you know, with Japan, we're already at the A minuses, so uh, now we go A. France. Pre tournament, really good rating. They finish in the final. It is a major, major achievement. I think this is not necessarily reflected in those ra ratings. What a um, hit France took and what a depth they have in the squad, and they almost would have won it all. Major props to France for that one. Uh, yes, it was maybe lucky against England, but I think in almost every other game I could see the quality of France shining through it. Even against England, while England had more of the game, um, there's always more quality in the French squad. That was still the difference, although I think England and France, uh, when I look at that quarterfinal, uh, if there was, if the best team should have won, it's one of those two, for in my personal opinion. France is bested by Australia. Australia came into the tournament, bested in the sense that statistically they performed slightly better, slightly better. I gave France an 85%, Australia have an 86%. Australia did, was one of the two uh, teams where I said pre-tournament, they actually have nothing to do here. They got two wins. Yes, the one against Tunisia was ugly as can be. The one against Denmark, similarly opportunistic. However, that's exactly what they needed to do. They were well organized uh, and they knew that uh, the other teams have finishing problems. And so we just need to score when we need to score. Huge props to them. And then they take eventual World Cup winners almost to overtime. And I don't know what Argentina will have done in overtime. I gotta be honest with you, this was a really, really, really strong showing by Australia. A uh, very positive showing uh, that is largely underappreciated. And what also I find very uh, weird is that while the World Cup was hosted in uh, Western Asia, it's the Eastern Asian teams that really performed well, which I did not expect. I expected Saudi Arabia, Iran going a little bit deeper, that's, that's South Korea, Japan and Australia. That is remarkable. Top three, the bronze medal, medalist Croatia, of course, has to finish in third place, making it to the semifinals. Uh, totally unexpected, ousting Brazil. This was always the big stumbling, it would always have been the big stumbling block for them. Moving on, um, Croatia were simply sublime when it counted. And yes, aging squad, and that's why they couldn't give them Argentina could run for other money. That's why they didn't exert themselves so much. But what Croatia has summarily proven that they are really among the biggest teams from Europe at this moment. And even if the Kovacic, Brozovic, Modric uh, generation is leaving, there is a lot of talent coming, uh, still coming. This is not the last time we will see Croatia going deep in a tournament. And more loud, it's two, 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 two. Them that definitely were enriched this World Cup big time. And it was great to see Modric pick another World Cup medal. In at number two are the World Cup winners, Argentina. Maybe not that high of the, the highest rating uh, of all of them because they were such uh, big pre tournament favorites. As I said, it was a fairy tale story. It may have been not the best team that won, but when they did it. When they did it, and that also counts, it's probably one of the most emotional wins that we will ever see at the World Cup. And for that, big props to Argentina. And when you win the World Cup, you always will perform statistically really, really, really well. Because it's not very likely to win the World Cup. Like you, Brazil, and you have a one out of five chance. But for every and everyone else, no, it's not very likely. So in that sense, really well done. And it leaves us with one team, and that's the big underdog of the tournament, the uh, uh, dark horse story in Morocco, making it to the semifinals. 
they were not even expected to make it out, out of the group. The one thing I said, the one African team that I can expect to do something is Morocco, because I saw that the squad is really, really, really good. And with Rekaragi, they had a, a coach that could actually harness the quality in the squad and actually move forward. And it was a really joy to see Morocco play. And it is the comparisons to Greece, I think, are really, really unfair. They reminded me a little bit more of an Italian side where, yes, they stand tight defensively, but they can hit you on the counter -track. If they would have had a world-class striker up front, I think Morocco could have gone, gone deep in the squad, uh, in the tournament. And I also think that it was maybe not in their favor that France took the early lead in the semi-final. However, we also got to say that Morocco can play. And that was nice. That it ended a little bit on a sour note with the fourth place finish and, you know, all, uh, all against the referee and so on. I want to forget and I want to remember this was an incredible Moroccan run. Statistically, they were the best performance. Against their own expectations, they outperformed them the best. They get a 98% rating here, which is, of course, a clear A. So this is all looking back at the World Cup. Looking forward, I, I also need, need to mention, as I said, we have European qualifiers come, coming soon. We have Nations League again coming, and, 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 and. Uh, but I want to talk about the next World Cup, which, of course, is a 48-team World Cup. Of course, the greatness of the group stage got everyone to think, I think that the groups of three that, that, that they were planning, that's not all that great. And I, well, I find groups of three intriguing. I would have found it more intriguing if then only the top team advances. With the top two advancing, collusion is always possible. So it was always going to be a hard sell for me. The tournament becomes also unwieldy. Now, I see already that they are thinking of making the 48 groups and making like a twice a 24 team tour to tournament, like a Euros double it up. No, that makes it also really, really hard to follow. It just gets too bloated. I personally think 48 teams is already a real mess. The only way that you could salvage that is, you know, for uh, 48 is 16, 16, 16. Uh, that you have 16 teams that are fixed at the World Cup and then you make some sort of pre-playoff that we get again to a group stage of eight groups because this is something we, we can follow. We already saw if we have 12 groups like we had in the Europa League for long, this is really hard to follow even for the casual fan. I mean, it's already eight groups are a lot to get to. The tournament becomes so unwieldy and in addition it will become so random because we get a huge knockout stage and honestly knockout stages are not the best way to find a world champion so i really think that they take a hard thing for me the only reasonable thing is to say okay we want a 48 team world cup maybe we can do a pre-qualifying tournament and give out some money, but the World Cup still remains with 32 teams. I think that's the only way to do it. And I think the pre-qualifying tournament, yes, you can make it in an, uh, you can probably make it in somewhat an interesting way. You could maybe say, okay, 16 teams have qualified. Then the remaining 32 teams, they qualify for a pre-qualifying tour tournament where we make group stages where the top two advance then it's interesting and you don't have it in the same tournament and you can sell it and you can have this as a preparation for the next. This would be my personal uh, way of going about it. But the way that we have it currently set up, it's going to be a mess. It is also going to be interesting because we go from a tournament in the tiniest possible place to probably the largest area covered in between stadiums at the World Cup ever. Canada, United States, and Mexico. Vast distances will be a completely different. It will also be played in summer. Scorching heat. And for European audience, there will be a lot of late games that probably will be really good, but it will be not the best times to watch. I think the future of the World Cup to me is really in balance and it's jeopardized by bloating up the tournament even more. 
there's a danger that this was probably literally the last reasonably good World Cup. I think going increasing up to 32, 32 is such a nice format. I think the only reasonable thing is to go to 64, but then it's also really, really bloated. I think, and I really hope that someone hears me and gets it to the right uh, people at FIFA. Don't have this free, you know, we already got rid of the conf confederation. Make it worthwhile. Make it in such a way that you have a pre-qualifying tournament. And this can be, if you want, if the World Cup takes place in uh, June, make it in March or make it, make it, make it in May, maybe, maybe in a November winter break or whatever. Whatever it is, make a qualifying tour to the tournament. It's three rounds, eight groups, top two at once. That could be really, really interesting. It will be, will be a true World Cup and you can place it right there in the host nation. To give them a trial run similar to the confederations cup maybe you can uh, even put it a summer earlier but i think that's then the run-up is to be i think this has to be seriously considered i also think uh, given the heat in the us in summer yes we would like to have a summer tour to turn it back but i think this may also have to be considered um so yeah many many things but i honestly think that the future of the world cup is a little bit in danger it's becoming too big for its own good and that has me a little bit worried, honestly. But yeah, with that, all those worries, I would like to hear from you what you thought, thought about the topics in this video. You know, uh, how did you see this World Cup or overall? How do you think it stacks up against other World Cups? I think it was a really good World Cup. I don't think it was the best ever. It was not the best ever, but it beat a lot of the World Cups in my lifetime. That I can say for sure. Um, I also would like to hear whether you think that Argentina was... I don't want to say worth it, champion, but, but if you have a similar feeling that this was actually a relatively fragile team that got lucky, that was not necessarily the best team out there, but you had luck at the right places and you hung on and maybe got even some helping hands here, 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 here and there. I still maintain Argentina, great story, good on them, great for the country of Argentina, but I don't have to think that they were absolutely the best team at this World Cup. And this is exactly what it is. We have a knocker stage, not always the best team wins because uh freak results can happen but hey those are my thoughts would like to hear yours and then of course how do you see my statistical ratings and the future of the world cup any case long one but i think it's worthwhile to talk about these things you can do it in one or two sittings in any case give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these i will come back to you with completely different topics we are closing the world cup right now Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!